Hello, everybody. Mark Sussman, editor of Willamette Week. Uh, back again for another Distant Voices with state economist Josh Lerner. Among other things, Josh has the job of uh, forecasting revenue that the state will have to provide all kinds of services, and in so doing, provides a peek into what the future of the Oregon economy looks like. Um, Josh, it's it's good to see you again. It was it's almost been exactly three months um, when we were about a month or so into COVID that that you and I chatted. It was right after uh, a pretty dire economic forecast for uh, both the country and the future of Oregon and Oregon state government. How have things changed or remain the same since that forecast? I know you're a couple weeks out from another official forecast, but you do have some data. Yeah, so, so I think, you know, the good news is, is that the economy has done significantly better than we thought. We thought we would see, you know, you know, near depression level economy and, and really a lot of apocalyptic readings with a ton of layoffs and a lot of income loss and then the whole perpetual downward cycle we see in a recession. Um, and, and we haven't. We, we see a bad economy. Right? The economy is in bad shape. There's no question about that. Uh, but it is better than we expected. So, so in that sense, things are better, um, right? That means we have more jobs, less unemployment, uh, more tax revenue than, than we thought we would have at this point. Um, but it doesn't mean the outlook is rosy. It does, you know, we, we still have a lot of hurdles to overcome before we get, we get healthy again. So we'll get to the outlook in a second, but why are things better? Is it largely because the Federal Reserve and Congress pumped so much money into the market you know, uh, return so much money, the $600 employment bump, the $1,200 that a lot of individuals got, all the PPP money, did that, is that principally the reason why? I, th I think it is. I think, I think it's clear to say that that had a massive impact in putting kind of a, a bottom, a floor under the recession. You know, this is as bad as things can get between, you know, March and April before that money really went out the door. And as that money came out, the stimulus, not the stimulus checks, the recovery rebates, plus the expanded unemployment insurance benefits and the PPP, as you're talking about, you know, that really kind of limited the damage uh, and, and turned things around and things got better over the summer. Uh, but now all those things have lapsed. And so it kind of creates this uncertainty in recent weeks of like, well, what comes next? And, and it looks like we're going to get another package at the federal level. Uh, but I don't know how significant the progress has been made there. Um, you know, the, the House the U.S. House passed something months ago, and the Senate is just now getting around to putting something, you know, solid on the table. So, so we'll see. Um, so, so I think that was clearly a, a reason for the rebound in the economy, all that assistance uh, being pumped out in short order. Um, but it, it certainly means we're, we're uncertain today, given, given all that has gone away. You know, you've pointed out in, in your economic analysis that some interesting developments have taken place during covid um, I think you indicated that, and I, I, I don't know if these are Oregon figures or national figures, that personal debt is down, that people are actually paying off their debt? Yes, it, it looks that way. And, and there's some technical issues with the collections of the data and, and the like, and, and people maybe not reporting because they're not at work. And, and there's, there's some technicalities there, but incomes are up, right? Household incomes are actually up due to all that federal aid. Uh, and people aren't falling behind on credit card debt and mortgage debt and that sort of stuff, at least at least through you know June when we have the last good data point. So, so, so we're, we're not in a terrible economic situation from that perspective due to that largely that federal assistance. D didn't I also read on your, um, in your comments that bankruptcies were down? And, and that's another hard thing to parse in terms of, yes, bankrupt, actual case filings for bankruptcies are down. Both and I'm sorry, and Josh, is this in the state of Oregon or nationally? Both, in the state of Oregon as well. Um, now, I'm sorry, one other question. These would be both personal bankruptcies as well as business bankruptcies? Yes. And they're least, down. In the stuff that's coming from the court system, the reports are showing that. So, so then the question is, in, to get more muddy, um, how much of this is due to that better financial situation due to the stimulus or not the stimulus, the assistance um, versus we know the court system is social distancing, right? They've been pushing off as many things as possible into the fall or later um, to avoid to avoid a lot of close contact. So, so how much of these court filing declines is necessarily due to 
good economy or better economy than we thought versus um, we're just going to see a rush of these things in the months ahead when, when the courts open back up a little bit more. Is there a possibility that um, economic behavior is such that even though we're social animals, we're going to realize I save so much money by only going out to eat once a week rather than three times a week, then I'm just never going to go out to eat that much. And that that will have a structural effect on Oregon's economy or um, valuation of real estate. I'm just wondering what, if any, thoughts you have about long-term changes? Yeah, it, it's it's still very preliminary. Um, again, it, it it feels like it's been years, but we've really only been in this kind of you know shelter-in-place stuff for what three four months now at max. Um, and so and, and so, if things were to clear up tomorrow or clear it by the end of the year. I'm pretty skeptical that we'd see a lot of permanent changes, right? Again, it would only be a, a you know, nine month cycle or, or so to speak. And, and so, so the sooner things get back healthy from a public health perspective and the economic perspective, the more the, I would think things will return to normal or the things that they were pre COVID. Um, but, but, you know, some of the things, the last things to come back, you know, we're worried about um, travel, business travel, convention centers, um, that sort of stuff, you know, probably some of the last things to come back. The going out to eat question will be really interesting. Um, fine dining, the sit down dining versus the, the takeout, you know, we can see certainly some shifts along those lines. Um, you know, our, our family, we still haven't sat down for a meal in a restaurant. Um, doing takeout, you know, a couple times a week, but, but definitely haven't sat down anywhere. Uh, we'll take it to a park and we'll let the kids play and run around um, if the playground's open and like and not people there. But uh, um, so I think some of those changes certainly we'll see it. The work from home is a really interesting one. There's a lot of speculation that we're going to see an increase in working from home on a massive scale. I uh, maybe choose to live in further flung locations um, and not closer to the cities where a lot of the jobs have historically been. Um, again, a couple months into this thing, we have no idea where those numbers will land. Uh, I think it's reasonable to expect some increase in, in remote work, uh, whether that's permanent remote work 100% of the time, or whether it's like 90% remote work where you go into the office once a week or twice a month or whatever the case may be, um, that will ultimately decide or ultimately indicate where people will live. Can they live in uh, you know, Bend or Missoula or, or Aspen or something like that, a truly more remote location and telecommute to the West Coast, Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, or, or do they need to live in the suburbs and then just do that commute into the office, you know, a couple times a month. I think that that is a key distinction. We don't know where that'll land and that's going to be up to the businesses themselves to decide.